Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Otherwise, happy Monday or whatever other thing you might be celebrating today. If you are new, I hope that you will stick around and maybe subscribe or even just stay for the next week of videos for me, which are gonna be my five days of faves. Today being the first day, which is makeup. So it's gonna be my favorite makeup of the last year, which <laughs> remember in 2016 when we were like, 2017 cannot be as bad as this year. There's no way. And then 2017 said, hold my beer. Let's hope that's not going to be the case next year. Ugh, rough. Just rough. So whether you are sneaking in watching this video amongst your family stuff, maybe you are not doing anything today, in which case, hello? That's fine too. If you do find yourself bored over the holiday season, please do use my social media down below. I would love to hear from you. Everything I'm about to mention will also be linked and listed in the description box for your convenience. Oh, and what am I drinking? What am I drinking? Peppermint. Cold brew, coffee, mocha. That is a pepperminty chocolate coffee to the um, non-coffee speakers. So I do have a list of everything here on my phone so I want to make sure there's nothing I forget. There probably will be some favourite products that I've forgotten to put in this video. Uh, please don't be angry at me if there's something obvious I've forgotten. I am a human. So the first two things are from the Desi KT Dose of Colors collab, which was huge. Everybody loved it. I think it sold out every time it was replenished. And I managed to pick up two of the items, I think, on the first release. So one of them that I got is the very famous Fuego highlighter. Everybody loves the packaging. I couldn't really care less, to be quite frank, but it's pretty and it sparkles. So I believe they also have a darker highlighter shade as well. So it's a very kind of warm gold. What I will say about this highlighter is, you know a lot of highlighters kind of look like lots of very fine glitter. This is more like a metallic face powder. It is just... Beautiful. Let me see if I can show it on my tattoo real quick. This one is so beautiful to put on lightly just for a very light glow or to really amp it up and have that kind of literally metallic highlight. It is a beautiful product. I think it will suit a ton of people. I especially like this because I do like to go from very light makeup to much more heavy makeup and I think this suits both uses. The only thing I will say is that if you are much paler than this, like right now, um, I'm probably about a good color to use this, but I think if you were very pale It may just be too gold and look a little dark on the skin um, But I think this is gonna be beautiful and tons of people and I have been loving it again Don't really care about the packaging that much, but the product amazing another product from that collab was their over-the-top lip gloss It's just a clear gloss with a fine gold glitter through it now This is beautiful on lips with nothing else on this is beautiful to top things off with um, It is called over the top just a beautiful gloss, super glossy and sparkly. I think it looks beautiful if you're not wearing any other makeup and you just have a super glossy lip. This would be perfect to top with a more dramatic lip color too. I just think they're beautiful products, obviously created by people in the same space. Um, so I think it's awesome to support them where possible. And also obviously they have the same kind of interests as the people who watch these kind of videos on YouTube. So chances are they're probably gonna create something that is useful to you too if you like the same kind of style makeup that they do. So yeah, both great products. Congrats to them on their collaboration. What is next? Telephone. I've got a fair few lip glosses in here and I basically had to take them all out of my bag to film this. So you're getting the bottom of the bag lip gloss faves. This next one is from e.l.f. It's their lip plumping gloss and this is in the color Champagne Glam. It's just a very, very slightly peachy but clear lip gloss with a gold shimmer through it again. And this one does have a lip plumping ingredient in it. I will say it's a little tingly. It doesn't make me feel like my lips are like huge and like bee stung by any means. I think there are stronger lip plumpers out there, but this is a gorgeous lip gloss regardless. But again, beautiful worn alone or on top of other colors. This would be really nice on like a beautiful peachy lip color, but I do often just wear this on bare lips. So another great lip gloss. Uh, you may be able to tell from this video that this year has been the year of the gloss for me because I have another three here which are my favorites. These are the Marie Nati, I believe that's how you say it, glosses on Petit Vor. I got this one tickled in one of my Petit Vor subscription boxes. I will link them below if you're interested. They're a vegan and cruelty-free subscription box and that is how I find out about most awesome things in my life. Um, anyway, I got this color tickled in my subscription box and it reminded me so much of I think it was my first ever MAC lip gloss, which was like in very similar packaging, almost identical color, and the scent 
is so similar. I also had a, I think a pigment from them, which was bright pink as well, and I used to do bright pink and black eyes, and then a bright pink glossy lip, so it was, it was a, a look to say the least. I fell in love with this because of that, it just had such nostalgia for me and then I ended up buying two more of the shades because I love this formula of gloss so much. It has a nice amount of pigment to it without being streaky, um, stays nice and glossy on the lips. It is maybe slightly sticky but most glosses I feel like are if you want them to last. So I love the formula and the shades and again this is the shade Tickled. And then I have the shade Posh as well and then Flare. One major problem I have had with these lip glosses in particular is that somehow these are about 50% more likely to go missing than your average gloss. I lose one of these every week, I swear. Sometimes I can only ever find one of them. I don't know where they end up. It's like they move around. It's honestly a miracle that I've managed to find all three at once, um, but somehow <laughs> these get lost more. I don't know, you do the math. My absolute favourite lip balm or treatment of the year has to be the Kopari Lip Love. Very glossy, but it is a treatment, it's not sticky. It is like just the perfect clear lip balm. It smells so good, it smells kind of coconutty. I think previously my favourite lip product in the same kind of category would have been the Tatcha Camellia Balm. I still am obsessed with that stuff, but this one is... This one is nice because you can apply a small amount for just a balm or you can apply more for a gloss. I don't feel like you can get very glossy effects with the Tatcha balm. It is a really beautiful balm. Um, but this one I think is better because you can use it as a balm or a gloss. Um, and also, <coughs> it's probably cheaper. I'm going through everything in a very willy-nilly fashion. I hope that's alright with you. Um, my next favourite is a brush cleaner. This is the Delium Tools Cosmetic Brush Cleanser in the scent. Ocean Breeze. I guess I could smell like an ocean breeze. It smells kind of like a cocktail to me, but doesn't everything? They're a cruelty-free brand. This is a vegan formula brush cleaner. It does a really good job of removing powders, creams, liquids, anything on your brush, this can remove it. Previously, I did use the Dr. Bronner's solid soaps and I do still like that, but I just think this is so convenient and does just as good of a job. So you've got the soap to cleanse it and then this little textured pad on the inside to kind of like scrub your brush off on. Rinse them, your brushes are in beautiful condition um, and very clean. Um, and I just think it's so neat and convenient that it just comes in a little tin and it looks nice. This year has also been the year of the drugstore products for me. A lot of you guys pushed me and pushed me into doing a vegan and cruelty-free drugstore tutorial and haul type video and really just to incorporate more drugstore options into my makeup videos and I finally listened and I'm glad that I did. So thank you guys for pushing me into that because I feel like previously when I had tried drugstore vegan products they just weren't that great but now I have to say they have really stepped up their game so one of the favorites I discovered along the way was the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Golden Beige. This is what I have on today. I love it. It's great for full coverage. I will say it reminds me of the MAC. What is the little MAC foundation with a black lid? It's kind of stubby. It smells like wall paint. You know the foundation I'm talking about probably if you if you use MAC foundations. The really full coverage one. Anyway, this is like a more liquidy version of that that goes on with probably the same coverage but less cake. So like for me, I think something like the Kat Von D foundation, yes it gives very flawless results but to me it just feels so thick on my skin and I think it's because of my skin type. Just the amount of oil that I have mixed with that foundation, not good. Whereas this gives me the same full coverage but it's just a lot more comfortable. I think it wears better on me and I think it's amazing, especially for the drugstore. Regardless of where it's from, it's an amazing foundation. Um, and I think a lot of you guys would probably like this. But it does smell like paint, it does. Two setting sprays I've been loving. These were both from Cover FX. One is the illuminating setting spray and one is the mattifying setting spray. I do think they both work really nicely to prolong the look of your makeup. I think they both work well to take down any powderiness if you have over powdered. The mattifying one is quite nice and mattifying. Um, but I don't find it makes me feel like dry or tight or anything like some mattifying ones do, so a really great option. But the illuminating setting spray is so beautiful. It just adds a perfect glow to the skin, makes it look more natural, even if you do have quite full coverage makeup on like I do now. Something about just adding a layer of this over the top just makes it look like it's glowing. And it looks beautiful, but it's kind of like imperceptible. Imperceptible? Imper... What's the word? In... Perceivable. Inconceivable! 
ah, whatever the word is. Anyway, this stuff is great and I really love it. I'm gonna put some on now. You gotta shake it before you use it. This is also a really nice one to quickly spray across your chest if you are um, wearing a shirt that shows your chest or shoulders. Just makes it look kind of nice and glowy. So definitely two great setting sprays. Okay, now jumping in to lashes. The one brand that immediately popped into my head when I was thinking of lashes as far as the past year were Aether Lashes. You know those lash brands that you see online that are like mink, luxury, blah, 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 made of animals. Anyway, these are like a beautiful luxury mink style lash company that is actually cruelty free and vegan. There is no animal involved in these lashes. They are all synthetic. And they just have some really great options from something more kind of dramatic that I have on now. They have even more dramatic ones than this. And then they have some more kind of natural kind of fluttery ones. And you get to have the nice boxes to keep them in. And they do seem like those like nice, beautifully made luxury mink lashes, but there is no mink harmed in the making of these. So um, I do have a full video on my favorite vegan and cruelty-free lash companies and styles and stuff. So I will link that up in the top corner for you and not bore you too much. But Aether Lashes was one I had to mention when it came to my favorites of the year in the way of lashes because they are beautiful and they have so many options. All right, next up we have even more drugstore products. They really just blew me away this year. Um, they look like they came from my childhood. They look pretty disgusting and tatty, but these are the Wet n Wild Color Icon bronzers, which <laughs> is funny because, I mean, this is barely a bronzer for me, but this is certainly not a bronzer. Anyway, I think that this is named incorrectly, but they are great products. My only complaint is that they smell. They both smell like the toilet cleaner that they use in UK seaside public toilets. If you grew up in England and you went to the seaside as a kid, whatever that era of toilet cleaner was, it smelled like this. I hate the smell, but the products are great. So they are just powder bronzers. Bronzers. Um, they do have SPF 15 in them. This one is in the color Ticket to Brazil. So this is one that I would use to just kind of like dust lightly all over my face. Or if I'm much paler, I would maybe use this as a bronzer then. Um, and then this one, which is Reserve Your Cabana. That's a highlighter. That's a, this is a highlighter, not a bronzer. But a lot of you guys told me to pick this up when I talked about this one. Um, and you said to use it the same as you would the Hourglass Ambient Light Powders. And that is a perfect way to describe it. This is a great kind of can't quite describe it highlighter like you can't pinpoint it it just brightens up the face you can dust it lightly over the whole face or you can use it as more of kind of a pinpointed highlighter just exactly where you want it and it just is so beautiful and kind of like a buttery powder definitely a similar use as the ambient light powders but obviously considerably cheaper um and easier to find because you can get them at the drugstore Okay, and then the kind of creamier version of those are the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Sticks. So I have the shades You're a Natural, which is this kind of concealery nudie shade. I then have When the Nude Strikes, which is this kind of pearlescent pinky silver highlighter. And then um, this one is Oaks on You, which is just a kind of bronzer. It says contour stick, but it's very warm, so I would use it as a kind of bronzer contour hybrid if anything. So they're just little twist up creams, very pigmented, easy to blend. Honestly, if I didn't know better, I would think that these were probably done by a much more expensive brand. They really are giving drugstore makeup a good name, in my opinion. So yeah, these are the colors. As you can see, lots of pigment, also very creamy. Um, I love them, can't say enough good things about them. If you want some cream, highlight and contour products, these, buy these. And anything I can find discounts for, I will put that below as well. My favorite mascara of the year has been the Bodybuilder from The Balm. They have a bunch of mascaras in their What's Your Type range. The Bodybuilder is the one I like. It's very black. I like the brush. I find it's easy to get a nice black coverage and build up volume very easily. If you don't want volume or if you are prone to having the kind of like three triangles for lashes thing and you don't want that, don't buy this. But if what you want is like volume on the first coat, you maybe need this mascara. In fact, I do think you might like it. <laughs> Obviously I have lashes on today, but this is what I'm wearing on my lower lashes. This is just one coat. Usually I will do a coat on the top lash, the bottom, and then another one on the top. And it just gives you beautiful black, fluttery, fluffy lashes. I love this stuff. Great volumizing mascara. So I think this is the last of the uh, trusty bottom of the bag lip products. 
My favourite lip liner of the year is going to be no surprise to those of you who have been following me for a while, but it's the Red Apple Lipstick Natural Lip Liner. So I bought these from Petit Vore, so I'm not sure if this is the same everywhere, but the one I have in natural, which is my favourite, is a pencil. Like, you sharpen it, it's a pencil. I also bought blush, which is a different shade, and that is in, like, one of these retractable pretend pencils. The first one of these I bought, I sharpened this one, and I was like, oh, I'll sharpen the other one too, forgetting it was a plastic pencil, and um, I ruined it, so I had to buy another one. Anyway, what I will say is the pencil ones, I think, go on easier and are creamier than the ones in the, um, in the plastic pencil. I feel like you really have to warm up the plastic pencil ones, whereas the pencil is amazing, which is the color natural. I think this is my second one now, and both of these have been a real pencil, and I'm just worried that they might turn this one into a plastic pencil, and then I might not like it as much. Red Apple Lip, if you're listening, please make everything a pencil. I like the pencils, I think they work nicer. That's, that's my one request. Anyway, this color is perfect for me, very close to my lip color or a similar tone at least, so it just works really nicely. A lot of the time I will just color my lips in with this and not wear anything else, or I might just put like a little bit of balm, like the Kopari Lip Love on it. And it just gives definition to your lips without looking too obvious that you're wearing lip liner. I love it, can't say enough good things about it, but that is just the one thing I would say is get the ones that are pencils, not plastic, if you have any way of knowing which those are. I'm sorry, I can't be of more help. I've got this chronic itch between my eyebrows. Can hardly be chronic if it just started a second ago, can it? Back to highlighters, one I had to mention, thanks to Tashina for telling me how amazing this was, is the Root White Gold Illuminator. If what you want is a bold, brazen highlighter, you need this. It's a very light champagne look. Look at that, it's burning through the lens as we speak. It's champagne-y, but it's frosty, and it is just very bold. It's such a beautiful highlight. Anyway, I think they're really doing a great job of showing that more natural products can also perform incredibly well, because this highlighter is just blinding, honestly, it's amazing, so. I guess my only issue with it is that it's loose, and I don't typically like loose products, because I think they're messy, but it's worth it to me, because this is beautiful. Next up, we have a brow product, which is the Eye of Horus Husk Brow Fiber Extend. This is a tinted brow gel with fibers in. Yes, you heard it. There have been other brands that have come out with these, but this is by far my favorite one. I feel like it adds kind of like volume to my brows as well as tinting them nicely. And then the color gel in it even kind of like fills in some gaps I have sometimes. So if I'm having very light makeup days, I will wear just this. But like today, I used the Kat Von D uh, tattoo pen, brow pen, whatever it's called, which I think has been maybe discontinued, but... I bought like five of them at once the last time I bought them, so I'm going to be set for at least another day or two. Um, anyway, I use the Kat Von D brow pen to kind of draw in brow hairs, and then I use this on top, and it just really bulks everything up and just like finishes off and makes them look like, you know, like, boom, my brows. Here they are. Welcome to the room. Anyway, so I've been loving this for my brows, thickens them up, I think it's a great product. If you do have some brow already, but maybe it's very fair, or maybe you just want it to be a bit thicker, highly recommend trying this stuff out. I am gonna have a baked potato after this, that's my treat. Well, it's not a treat, it's just dinner, it's just a potato, isn't it? But, anyway. Okay, let's talk cream blushes. Now, for the majority of the year, not that you would believe it to look at me right now, I went for very minimal makeup looks. I wanted to look very natural, very glowy, I wanted to look more youthful and juicy, you know? So I was using a lot of cream products, but for some reason, for the start of this winter, I've just been like, let's go full coverage, let's cake it on, let's go for a massive wing. Um, anyway, <clears throat> for the rest of the year, I was going very light and creamy on the makeup, and so I have two cream blushes. One is from Juice Beauty and is in the color Orange Blossom. These are their Last Looks blushes. So it's kind of a very slightly peachy pink. It does have kind of like a little bit of luminous gold through it, but it's just a beautiful product. It just adds some life and glow to the skin, um, keeps it looking like skin, but just makes it look more healthy and juicy. So um, this is a beautiful product, especially if you are a bit more tan. This shade I think would be beautiful. It would just be kind of like a sheer pop of color. Um, that adds a little highlight and life to the face. So a beautiful, beautiful product. And definitely once I'm kind of getting over this full coverage makeup thing I've been enjoying lately, I will be going back to this. And then another one from 100% Pure. This is in the shade B2. 
baby pink, I think, because they printed something over it. Um, this is a much more kind of true baby pink colour. It does have a slight sheen through it, but I would say this is probably going to give you more similar effects or finish to a powder blush, whereas the Juice Beauty one looks more of like highlight, creamy, glowy. This one is more like a powder blush. I love the colour, I love the finish it gives. They're just two completely different products, but the only thing is I feel like the packaging of this is annoying. Like this kind of size is easier because you can fit a brush in it, you can also just use your fingers whatever you want, but this one you kind of have to use a finger and if you had longer nails and you'd you know used a lot of it that would probably be quite difficult to do, but you can't really fit a brush in there because it's so small. So that's my only complaint is that I don't like the packaging but I think the product itself is beautiful. Um, so yeah. One of the brushes I've been loving is the Sigma Soft Blend Concealer F64 brush. If you want the effects of using a finger to blend out your makeup, but you don't like physically putting your finger in makeup like me because I'm weird, this is the brush for you. I use this to kind of blend in cream concealers like my Marc Jacobs concealer. I love it with this brush, it's beautiful. If you want to apply kind of cream highlights or blushes with fingers, but again, don't like using your fingers, you can use this brush and it just beautifully kind of blends things out in a way that your finger would without getting it on your finger. So I love this brush for that because it saves me from sensory disgust. So, thank you brush. Now I am thinking I'll probably do a kind of updated brush essentials video or something like that, but some brushes I absolutely had to mention in this video are some ones I found towards the end of the last year, which are this set from Wet n Wild. I don't know if this is all of them, but they did send me this ahead of time. Hopefully it's out now because these brushes are amazing. So if you've been wanting a beautiful set of brushes, but maybe don't wanna buy like the expensive disgusting real Kylie Jenner ones. Um, these are amazing, beautiful, and they're gonna be a lot more reasonably priced than some others. So what are some of my favorites? This weird looking one, which is the P55. It's got like a little dip in it, so you can probably put your product in there if you want. Um, you can buff that in, or it's nice for like cheek products, stuff like that. I love this one for contouring or any kind of like precision uh, powder work that you might wanna do. This one is, oh sorry, that was P65. This next one, P75. <coughs> oh my gosh, this is a good highlighter brush. It is just perfectly sized, you know? Love it. And then some of these eye ones. So there's P20, which is a beautiful blending brush. P15 is a kind of, still a blending brush, but a little flatter, more similar to the flat MAC ones that everyone uses. And then there's P10, which is great for kind of like buffing along the lash line or doing a little detailed work. And then these two, P70, I've used it as a foundation brush a couple times and I like. And then P60 is nice for setting or bronzing large areas or any kind of like bigger areas. These are just incredible brushes. Some of them are a bit dirty right now, but they do wash very well. They retain their shape. They perform beautifully. And I just think they look gorgeous without breaking the bank, so. Yep. And then the last, we've only got two products left, can you believe? So one is the Au Naturel Cream Highlighter in Celestial. This is a stick highlighter, as you may have imagined. Very frosty, white, kind of pearlescent highlighter. It is gorgeous, it blends out beautifully, and it is just such a beautiful frosty highlight. Their stick foundations are also really great. Their stick blushes, if you want a more natural product that performs. Again, Au Naturel are really awesome. And I hope to be bringing you some more things from them soon. And then the last product is a primer. Doesn't make any sense to me why I've saved this for last either. But it is the Adorn Cosmetics Hydration and Plumping Skin Primer. This is somewhere between skincare, primer. It is beautiful. It kind of plumps up the skin. It makes it nice and hydrated. Makes makeup easier to blend over it. Just an amazing primer. So if you are maybe only just getting into primers, you're not sure what to go for, or maybe you don't like the really silicone-y feeling primers, this one is beautiful, very hydrating. Like I said, it's definitely like hybrid primer skincare. Just beautiful. So that is it for this video, the first day of my five days of faves. If anything in this video has you know, has sparked your interest, shall we say. You can find it linked and listed in the description box down below, as well as all my social media. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will meet you guys down there. I really hope you're all enjoying your kind of holiday season, but if not, and if times are crappy, I'm here for you. I'll be back tomorrow. I will see you there. So yeah, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you tomorrow. And uh, goodbye.